copy of God's Word to John chapter 8. It's a camera? Yeah. Hmm? It's already on. Thank you, though. Um, and while you're turning to John chapter 8, I want to remind you that we have these books available. We have a church member that orders these for us every quarter. It's called Our Daily Bread. And we have a bunch of them right now. Uh, this is December, January, and February. They're daily devotions. And we would love for you to take some of these with you. Because I hate for them to go to waste. We've got some out there on the table. I've got some here. I've got another stack over there in that box. If you'd like to take some of these, um, you know, maybe put your, you know, Four Winds Church uh, for the website or something like that on them and give them to folks or whatever. we got a whole mess of them. So please don't leave out of here without taking some of these. And if you don't have a daily devotion, they are a great way to, uh, to, to use that on a daily basis. Each day has got a little time where you read it and think about it, pray about it. I'm going to give these to Ron because I know Ron has got healthy legs and he can carry these right up to the front. And uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I didn't plan very good for that, but I appreciate you helping us out there, my friend. So those are great, and I just encourage you. We get those every every quarter, and if you don't have a daily devotional, it's a great resource to use and get you thinking. And it's a good good conversation starter when you're sitting around the table or whatever. So take some time, take those. They're free. They don't cost anything for you. Like I said, we've got a church member that donates those every, every quarter. So take those with you. I'm going to ask you to read along with me in your copy of God's Word, beginning in John chapter 8. And we're actually going, 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 going <laughs> only, like I said, my lips just don't work sometimes. We're only going to be looking at a particular verse. And, and I've entitled this, When Light Lit. And, and that word lit there, I know you can think like, well, when light got turned on, but also in, in the South, when we say something is lit, it means it's kind of settled, it's kind of landed where it is. And I, I've got a double meaning for that this morning because we know that when Jesus was born, He didn't just show up in Bethlehem and begin His, his existence there. We know that Jesus had always existed. From Genesis chapter 1, when God says, Let us make man in our image. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three of them were there at the same time. So Jesus has always existed in eternity past, and He will exist in, in, in now and forever, forevermore. But there was a time when He stood up from His throne and laid aside His holy robes and became a baby and landed, or lit, if you will, in Bethlehem. And I wanted to emphasize the fact that that is when light came into the world. Now, where do we get that from? Well, in John chapter 8, in verse 12. Now, Jesus has just taught a message about a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And, uh, and these people brought her before Jesus. And, and Jesus basically said, if any of you people were without sin, go ahead and throw a stone at her. Because that's what the law said. You were to, to stone someone who was caught in the act of adultery. And, but Jesus says, here's the condition. If, you're, if you want to do that, then you've got to be without sin to actually uh, judge her. And of course, the Bible says the older ones drop their stones first and then the younger ones. And they all went away. And then Jesus says, didn't anyone judge you? And she says, no, sir. And he says, and neither do I. Go and sin no more. That's the setting of when Jesus is speaking to the people. And then he says this in verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows Me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Did you hear that? So we're going to talk about that today, of when light lit, and what that means for you and me as followers of Jesus Christ. But before we do anything else, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, help us to understand what it means to walk in the light. What it means to, 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 to have your presence and, and to present your presence to those around us. And Father, we just look forward to all that you're going to teach us here this morning. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you. Amen. And amen. 
Now, when Jesus speaks these words, it's one of what's referred to in the book of John as the I am statements. There's actually seven I am statements in the book of John where Jesus refers to himself. The first one is Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and that's where you can find those. The second one, which we just read, he says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am the door to the sheepfold, that just to the sheep gate. And basically, he is the way in which sheep enter and exit uh, the, the place where they're kept safe. He says, I am the good shepherd. So not only is he the gate to the shepherd, to the place, but he's also the one that watches over the sheep. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, I am the true vine. When Jesus would speak to people, he would try to give them an image in their head that they would understand. Now, during biblical times, people didn't have buffets or they didn't have all-you-can-eat opportunities. Most of them had to really struggle to get food. And the, one of the basic uh, needs that they had was just simple bread to have something to eat. And so bread was a staple in a Jewish person's life. And they would need it to sustain their life. But Jesus wanted to paint a picture. He says, you think that that bread that you eat and put in your body is going to satisfy you. But quite frankly, he says, anything that enters the body is going to exit the body. And we're not going to get into the biology of that by any means. But nonetheless, anything that you eat is going to do whatever it's going to do to help your body. And then it's going to exit. But Jesus says, I want you to understand that I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He says, I am the one that's going to satisfy. But then he says the second time, he says, I am the light of the world. Now I want to emphasize something that Jesus will say something in John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke again to him and says, I am the light, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is referring to himself as the light as the opportunity for someone to be released from the darkness. So what is the darkness? Darkness is sin, right? Now, I know that this may seem pretty simplistic to some of y'all, but if you've ever been in real darkness, you know how uncomfortable that is? Uh, we used to have a piece of property up north, and there were some woods, and those woods didn't have any light in them at all, at all. And there was no surrounding like that would shine in. So when there was no moon and a heavy cloud cover, and you were in the middle of those woods, because that's where I would go when I'd go deer hunting, I would get out there in the middle of those woods, and I'd turn off my little light. I had little lights on my, on my hat. And I mean, it was so dark, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. That's darkness. Well, the Bible will talk about darkness as being sin. Now, why would it refer to darkness as being a representation of sin? Because just like darkness doesn't allow you to see anything clearly, sin doesn't allow you to see the Lord. It doesn't allow you to see what God has in store for you. So I wanted to emphasize that this morning because Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, he says, if you really want to get out of the darkness that you're in, and maybe some folks are saying, well, I, I'm not really living in darkness, but is there something in your life that, that just seems to, to sort of uh, determine how you live your life? For some folks, it's, it's finances. For some folks, it's popularity or whatever that is. Whatever it is that, emphasize, that is emphasized in your life, other than Christ, can keep you from being able to walk in the fullness of Christ and in His life. So I'm going to try to emphasize that here today. Now, Jesus would say, or we read in 1 John chapter, uh, sorry, John chapter 12, verse 46, I have come in, I'm sorry, I messed all that up. I have come into the world as a light. Now, I know that's the NIV version right there, so he's not saying like, I'm just one of many lights. He says, no, no, I am actually the only light. And, and so that the one that believes in me should not stay in darkness. By following Christ, by believing in Christ, by trusting in Christ, we begin to recognize where darkness is and then begin to understand that darkness is not someplace we want to stay. Isn't that what sin does? It tries to draw us in. It tries to cause us to be distracted or, or be, uh, be self-sufficient. 
when sin is, 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 is dominating our lives. And I know some of you are saying, well, I don't have that problem. Well, a lot of folks do. And so maybe you don't deal with it, but somebody in your life does. And maybe this is the way that God is saying, I've got a message for you to help share with someone else. We also read in 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. This is the message that we've heard from Christ. Now, John wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelation. So this is 1st John. This is not the Gospel of John, 1st John. He says, this is the message we have heard from Him, which is Christ. I put that in there so you can understand who Him is. And declare to you, God is light. Now, for those folks that want to argue about the fact that Jesus really isn't God, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And John comes back here and says, God is light. So if Jesus is the light of the world, then Jesus is proclaiming that He is indeed God. And we know Him as God the Son. The three parts, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He says, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. Now remember what I said earlier, how darkness is representative sin. So God didn't, doesn't have any sin in His life, and He said Jesus as the perfect sacrifice, so there's no sin in Jesus' life. One of the things that the Jewish people had to do is they had to offer sacrifices in the temple. And the requirement of them for that sacrifice was to bring a perfect sacrifice, bring a perfect animal of some kind. And of course, we're familiar with the sacrificial lamb. They would have to take a lamb out of their flock and they would bring it to the temple and they would sacrifice it. And it was supposed to be without blemish or it was supposed to be without any broken bones or any you know, wounds. or anything. It was to be a perfect sacrifice. And then, of course, the temple realized they could make a few bucks, so they started selling these things there so folks could come, buy their little dove, take it in sacrifice, and go home and feel like they've satisfied. And they began to water down what God had initially said. So, Jesus, so God says, I'm going to send the perfect sacrifice. And by the way, He's perfect because there's no darkness, there's no sin in Him. He is perfect to pay for the sins that you and I have committed and the sin debt that we all love. So look what he says. He says, there's no darkness in him. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, what do you think that means? You ever had anybody do this? Man, I love Jesus. I, man, I just love Jesus and I go to church all that time. And then they begin to use some kind of nasty language or start ripping somebody apart. Uh, uh, about what, uh, what they did or what they did. I, I've seen more folks trash their testimony in the last six months than I probably have in the last 60 years. You know why? Because we say one thing, it, that we love Jesus, but then our actions don't really match up with that, do they? He says if we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in and continue to live in our sin, what does it say? We lie and do not live by the truth. He said, well, Pastor, every once in a while I mess up. I get it. I use a hammer and a nail. When I use a hammer and a nail, sometimes I hit the wrong nail. And, and my mind wants to go back 20 years on how I would respond. But then my heart says, wait a minute. I represent the kingdom. I want to take captive that thought and make it obedient to Christ. You see, if we claim that we live for Him, that we, if we claim we have fellowship, we, we've received Him as our Lord and Savior, we've got to continue and carry on and, and, and act in a sinful fashion, the Bible says we're lying to not only Him, but to ourselves. And we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, if we let Christ fill us so much that when it comes to responding or acting or, or saying things, we filter it first of all about what Jesus would want in our lives, what He would want us to do. He says if we walk with Him, we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You ever come into the presence of somebody and knew immediately that they were a believer before they ever said anything or before they ever did anything? You just knew it. Why? They walk in the light, you walk in the light, you have fellowship with them. You recognize them. I love it when that happens. When I'll be, I'll go into it. We went into a restaurant one day and we were having, having lunch. That's when we actually could do that in this, in this state. Um, and uh, the waiter came up and, and we were talking, just having a great old time. And I looked over my wife, I said, I bet he's a believer. 
And uh, he didn't say that. I said, I bet he's a believer. So I left him a little note, you know, hey, great job. Left him a nice tip and all that kind of stuff. And then I gave him my, my name and my telephone number. And sure enough, he called me. He's, he was a pastor. He was a pastor. You say, well, you guys recognize each other because y'all are alike. Said, no, no, I just knew there was something about that guy. Why? He walked in the light. And I recognized that. Now, don't misunderstand. Being a Christian does not mean you're being perfect. And none of us are perfect. But there should be that desire to continue to walk in light rather than gravitate to the darkness. Because the Bible says evil folks like the darkness because their, their deeds are not able to be seen by, by everybody. Why do you think nightclubs and all those things are always dimly lit and dark? Because that's where stuff goes on and a lot of people just don't want things to be seen. And the devil prays on that. He says, he goes on to say, He is in the light of we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us, cleanses us from all of our sin. It's a great verse to keep in mind. So now I want to break this down a little bit. And I'm going to rely on two words. One is the word cause. C-A-U-S-E. And cause is something that brings about an effect or a result. So a cause. And then I want to compare that with the word allow. A cause is something that is done that results in some kind of effect or some kind of thing. But a, a, something that is allowed is, is it, it, it makes something possible. So I'm going to use those two words to kind of compare the cause of darkness and the allowance of light. Of light okay? Can you follow me on that? The first thing I want to point out to you based on our text here today is that darkness causes us to stumble. There was a comedian a long time ago that used to talk about how he would get up in the middle of the night and he would say, you know, I, my mind would say, you don't need to turn a light on. But my feet would say, turn the light on because we're the ones that are going to suffer by the mind because the mind's not really going to have that big of a deal. It's not going to be impacted when you stub the toe, but the toe is going to feel that impact. Well, that's kind of what's going on here. Darkness, when we can't see well, when we don't see things clearly, it causes us to stumble. It causes us to lose our footing. Now, isn't that what sin does? You get around a group of folks and all of a sudden someone starts telling that kind of joke that's just a little off color. And what usually ends up happening, what started out as a little off color, gets very, very ugly. And that's what darkness does. It causes us to stumble. It causes us to, to, uh, to, to, to let down our guard a little bit. It, it causes us to kind of kick off some of those pieces of armor that the Bible says in Ephesians 6 we should put on. And we begin to get drawn into that. Darkness will cause us to stumble. That's what sin does. But light allows us to see. Remember my example about going deer hunting? I had a hat that had a little light on there, and I press a button, and I could see, but I could only see out about five or six feet. It was still dark all around me, but I could see just enough to make my way down to the path and get to the deer blind safely. And then when I got in there, I turned it off, and then every noise that the woods made freaked me out. But anyway, but the light that you have allows you to see. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, Lord, your word is a light to my is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Lord, your word is what allows me to see in the midst of the darkness, and you're the light that dwells in me. So as I'm reading and listening to your word, I'm filled with that light and I'm able to move forward and recognize where I should walk and where I should avoid. You follow me on that? Now where do I get that from? Well, again, let's go back to John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That word, Word there, of course, we know is Jesus. The word Logos. He is the first, last Word of everything. And the Word was with God. He, that again, that references back to the Word. We know that Word is, He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, again, that's emphasizing back to the Word. That's where it kicks back to that first sentence. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. And we've looked at that verse just a few weeks ago. In Him, so notice, He, first of all, was with God. Through Him all things were made, and in Him, as a result of our relationship with Him, by receiving Him as our Lord and Savior, in Him was life, and that, was, and that life was the light of men. Why would that be important? 
Because man is sinful and we, and we walk in our darkness. And, and you know the funny thing, not funny thing, the sad thing about that is most folks are stumbling around in their darkness and don't even know it. They're totally content with the darkness in their life. They're totally happy with the, the friends that, that get them out there and, and doing the things that are not God honoring. With, with the, the programs that they watch on television or, or the books that they read or any of those things. All of that stuff, they're totally content with that. And they don't even know that they're stumbling in the darkness. When Christ comes and dwells within the heart, that light allows us to see more clearly. Still going to mess up? Absolutely. But there's a big difference between the cause of darkness and the allowance of light. He says, in him was life, and that was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. But you know what this next phrase here says? But darkness doesn't get it. That's why when you tell somebody, well, you know, the Bible says, and they get this look in their face like, uh, the Bible, he said Bible, it's time to go sleep. That's why they want to turn that stuff off. They don't want to hear anything because we know it's truth. And truth makes people uncomfortable because they're comfortable with their darkness. And the minute you begin to show light on that, it's like a cockroach in the kitchen. The minute the lights come on, what do they do? They scurry for darkness. Darkness causes us to stumble while light allows us to see. The second thing I want to point out to you is that darkness causes us to be scared. And light allows us security. When I would walk through the woods with, without my hat, and there's times when I would, would forget my light, and I, I could figure my way out, you know, and, and scared me to death. Because every noise you hear, everything going on in the woods, you know, there's, there's always an axe murder in the woods when you're walking through them, right? I mean, isn't that just the way it is? There's always going to be some person out there behind a tree with an axe getting ready to kill you because it's dark. not comfortable. Can I ask you this question? Have you ever been in a situation where you were maybe doing something that you knew was not God honoring and you got frightened? Back before I became a believer, I was a heavy drinker. I mean, a heavy drinker. And I drove drunk a lot. And I can remember back there were times when I, I, I don't even remember getting home. And it wasn't when I was in the act of doing it that was the problem. It was the next day when I couldn't remember what I had done. That's when I got scared. Wow. How to make it home? How did I avoid collision? How did I avoid killing somebody? But you know what? I wasn't walking with Jesus then, so it was easy to go back the next weekend and do the same stupid thing over. Or we do this. Lord, if you get me through this, I'll never do it again. Because when, I, when, when, when you say that, you're in the midst of the fear, aren't you? Oh, man, I, just, I can't believe I did that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And then you go right back and do it again. That's darkness. And darkness will always lead us to fear. Why do you think so many folks are walking around this world afraid right now? Because their really reliance is not on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll get to this in a few minutes. I'll get ahead of myself a little bit. Darkness instills fear. Makes us scared. But light, light gives us security. We're able to see at least around us to be able to navigate more effectively. When Jesus says here, he says, when Jesus spoke in, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never Say that with me. Never walk in darkness if we're following him. A couple of verses. David would say this. He said, I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. We were watching this, this uh, program just recently about these people that live in Alaska. I think it's called Living in Alaska or something. You know, anyway, which makes sense. But these people... They live in like the middle of nowhere. There ain't no 911. There ain't no that kind of stuff. And, and this one family was living in this tent. Now, just that afternoon, 
They had come up on their boat onto the beach before they set their camp up. They're walking down the beach, and a grizzly bear is down the beach walking toward them. Now, me, I would have gone, Aah! What do they do? Well, let's just kind of stand here and kind of see what's going to happen, see what he's going to do. We're up wind from him. I mean, we're, 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 we're down, we're, we're, anyway, wherever the wind was blowing, they weren't, they weren't where they, were, they needed to be. They were where they needed to be, not where they went, where he wanted them to be. And the bear just finally lost interest and went another direction. And then they put up a tent and climbed in that thing that night. How in the world do you close your eyes knowing there is a grizzly bear down the beach? David, there's people always after him. I mean, he was a king, right? He says, you know what, Lord? I'm going to sleep just fine. Because you're the one that provides my safety. I love Alaska, by the way. I've never been, but I, I love watching that program. That's why we watch it. I just could not get over how calm they were. Well, we'll just kind of see what he's going to do. I'm like, I don't, I've seen enough. I'm on the TV. I'm watching you guys on the TV, and I'm ready to wet my pants. Darkness causes us to be scared while light allows. It allows for security. Now, whether you receive that security or not, it's totally up to you. But it does allow for us to be at peace. What about this verse right here? Psalm chapter 89, verse 15. Blessed is he, and I underline this for you because I want you to see it, who have learned. It is a learning process to trust in Christ, isn't it? Some people get it at a very young age. They, they learn to trust in Christ, and man, they're a great testimony. Uh, some of the teenagers we've got here in this church, man, I know they walk with God. And, and, and their confidence, it not, not, it's not arrogant, it's confidence. I know they walk with God, and I find that inspiring. Blessed, happy are those who have learned to acclaim you. Learn to praise you. Learn to speak about you, God. And, and who walk in the light of your presence. This is long before Jesus ever came to the earth. But he says, I, I, I'm learning to praise you and I'm learning to trust you. Darkness makes us scared while the light gives us security. Third thing. Darkness causes us to think of ourselves while light allows us to share. I grew up, obviously, I grew up in a hunting family when we were kids. When I was a kid, my, my dad would take me duck hunting. And we went to this, he drew this blind. He, they had an auction in Ohio. You had to get a certain blind, and you had to pick a certain place around the lake, and so on and so forth. So he got this blind that was on this, this island. And there was a blind on one end, the, that's what the place where you would sit to hunt ducks. You would hide behind this little place, and, and that was a duck blind. So the ducks couldn't see you. It made them blind, not you. So anyway, a duck blind. And this island had one on one end and one at the other end. And so we had one down here. So we got up on our boat. Of course, there in Ohio, you had to go like 4.30 in the morning and load up your boat and go out to this island and put out all your decoys and get into the blind. And then you're, you're all ready to go before the sun ever comes up. That's what you do. Everything is done in darkness. Well, we get to our duck blind, and some guys had already showed up and sort of made themselves at home in the duck blind. Well, my dad is not a passive man. And I'm about 12 years old. And I'm thinking, and, and, and they did not want to move, and my dad was going to make them move. And in my 12-year-old head, I'm thinking, wait a minute, there's six of us here on this island. There's four of them, there's two of us, and we've all got guns. And there's going to be a fight? They exchanged words back and forth and finally they realized they were wrong, so they went on down the other end of the island where their blind was at, and we took our blind. And the whole time I'm thinking they're going to sneak up behind us and kill us right there on the blind, right there on, on, the, on the island, and they wouldn't find our body until summertime. Well, then a storm came up, and the wind started blowing, and it was really, really bad, and the waves got so large that there was no way we were going to get off that island to go back to the port. So my dad said, well, what we'll do is we'll just get some burlap bags from our blind, you know, and we're going to get down here in a kind of a covered place. We're going to cover up. We're just going to spend the night. And you know what these guys did down the other end of the island? 
they came down to us and they said, hey, look, we, we've got a tent and, and we've got food. Why don't you guys come down there and, and stay with us so you'll be out of the weather? And I'm, again, I didn't think of this at the time, but as a young boy, I'm thinking, they're going to murder us in the tent. That's what they're going to do. They didn't have to do that. But it always struck me as, as maybe one of those guys was a believer or something like that. Maybe one of them was just a, and, and, and they, just, they just wanted to extend a hand. Or maybe they're just nice hunters. I don't know. But they invited us down, and we're, we're sitting in this tent, and we're sharing some food, and we're interacting with one another, and all of a sudden we hear a boat. And the Coast Guard, or not the Coast Guard, Lake Guard, or whatever it was, they came out and rescued us, and they made us leave everything there, and they took us back to the thing, and, and took us back to our cars and everything. But, but I thought about that. Isn't that exactly what we as Christians are to be about? Because there are people that are parking out on, in the middle of the storm, covered with a burlap sack, willing to brave the elements, and we've got all the security right here at our fingertips. Right here. All we need to do is go and say, hey, come stay with us. Come be with us. Darkness makes us think of ourselves. Doesn't it? When we're in sin, we just want to make sure that we're taken care of, that we're content, that we're happy. When you walk in the light as he is in the light, look what it says Light allows us to share. Those guys at the other end of the island could have just let us freeze right there on those rocks. They didn't. And friends, we should not have that mindset either. We should have the light of Christ and share that with as many folks as we can. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 16, and this is where I'm going to close. Jesus says we should let our light shine before men. That's the love of Christ. That's His Word. That's His teachings. That's all the things that He's done in us. We can turn around and share that with somebody else. May, may that light, may, may our light shine before men. And what's the purpose of that light shining and, and letting other folks see that? That they may see your good deeds. Now the assumption in there is that we're going to serve the Lord faithfully, right? But notice what the result, again, what's the, what's the allowance of our good deeds, of the things that we do? It's allowed so that they may, that they may see our good deeds and do what? Again, I've underlined it. Praise your Father in heaven. In other words, they got something that I don't have and I want that. <coughs> You see, when light lit there in Bethlehem, Jesus was born a baby and lived as a child and he grew into an adult. And then he, he taught and he showed and he shared and he prepared his disciples. He's prepared you and I to go out and be the light that he gave us. So I hope you'll keep that in mind. I hope you'll You'll remember that. We, we just came through the holidays. We came through Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, and oftentimes what folks do is the minute Christmas was over, boom, we shut everything down. You know, we take the lights down, put the tree away. We're done. <clears throat> no, friends, remember, when that light lit, it carried on. And that's what we need to do. We need to continue to be that light for Jesus Christ. Darkness will cause you to do all kinds of things. But light, light allows you to enjoy a lot of things. Don't walk in darkness. Follow the Lord and walk in the light. Let's pray together. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Can I ask you a question? And I, and I just feel impressed by the Lord to do that this morning. Did you understand what we were talking about today about walking in the light as Christ is in the light? If you understood what I was referring to, could I just ask you to slip your hand up? I'm not going to point at anything if you, if you got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I see, 
about two-thirds of the hands going up. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Then maybe the confusion that the rest of you have is that you really don't know Christ yet. Oh, you know facts of God and you, you talk about God and maybe you even read your Bible, but maybe you don't have that personal relationship with Christ. Friends, the next few moments might be the most important time of your life. That when we sing this song, we're going to call this song our song of invitation. And it's not that I'm inviting you, it's that Christ is inviting you to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. So you can walk in the light that I've referred to, referred to here. Oh, you're not going to know it all from day one. But you'll have that security that allows you to understand where darkness can't get it. Light comprehends. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for every person in the sound of your servant's voice, to those here in this room and those that are watching online. And Father, if there's a, a, an inkling of question about their relationship with you, not just believing facts about you, Lord, we can spout off facts all day. I can spout off facts about Alaska, but I've never been there, and I sure don't know anything personally. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that every person in the sound of your servant's voice right now would search their heart and say, do I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Fathers, there's no more precious gift than to have our sins forgiven and know that we've been washed and clean and able to start fresh as a follower of Jesus Christ. So I pray for each person here today in Jesus' name. Hi, I'm Jeff Noble, and I pastor an imperfect church. That's right, I said it, an imperfect church. And why is that? Because we have people in it. You know, there are no perfect churches, but I will tell you about Four Winds. We believe that the Bible is God's word. We believe that it is infallible. That means it will not fail you. We believe that it's inerrant. That means it's without error in its original text. We believe that the Great Commission tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. We believe the Great Commandment is to, to uh, go make disciples of all nations. We believe that marriage is between one man and one woman for life. And we believe that there's a separation between church and state, but not a separation in God from government. We're an imperfect church. We love the Lord and we love each other. And maybe an imperfect church is just what you need. Four Winds meets at the Marquee Theater in downtown Northville. We're located at 135 East Main Street, and we start at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. We hope you'll come and join us. Like I said, we're imperfect, but maybe imperfection is just what you need.